So, what makes a stock price change? The answer to this question can be as simple or as complicated as one wishes it to be. At the most basic level, stock prices move as a result of what we call market forces. Market forces is a word used to describe supply and demand. So a stock will move depending on its demand versus its supply. If more people want to buy a stock, which is the demand, than sell it, which is uh, the supply, the price will move higher. But on the other hand, if more people want to sell a stock than buy it, there would be greater supply than demand. Consequently, the price would fall. As William O'Neill, a very famous stockbroker, said, it takes big demand to move supply up, and the largest source of demand for stocks is by far the institutional buyer. When the major investors in the market act, they exert tremendous influence over stock prices. So those are institutions such as mutual funds, pension funds, banks, etc. They exert the force due to the sheer size of their orders on a stock. These large transactions tend to drive prices up or down uh, depending on the degree of buying or selling. How can you tell if people are buying or selling a stock? Well, there's this metric called volume. The volume of a stock basically tells you the number of shares being traded during a period of time. Therefore, a large increase in volume percentage can indicate increasing demand from those institutional investors. This is followed by increasing share prices. Keep in mind that institutional investors aren't the only ones who can make stock prices change. Regular investors can too. It's just that it would take more investors to deploy the same amount of capital as institutional investors do. Understanding supply and demand is easy. Where it gets a little more complicated though is figuring out why people like or dislike a particular stock. The reason why it is so difficult uh, to understand is because every investor has his or her own strategy, which they execute. But all in all, this comes down to figuring out what use is positive or negative for a company. The principal theory is that price movement of a stock indicates what investors feel a company is worth. If you remember from a, a few lectures back, uh, that is market capitalization. To further complicate things, uh, the stock price doesn't only reflect a company's current value, but also it reflects the growth that investors are expecting in the future. By far though, what affects a company's value are its earnings. Publicly trading companies are required to report their earnings four times a year, once each quarter. Since most of those companies report them during the same time, investors call those periods earning seasons. Investors watch company earnings with a lot of attention. If a company's results are better than expected, the stock price will jump. But if a company's results disappoint, the price will sink. Obviously, earnings aren't the only way that public sentiment can change concerning a stock. A famous example is the 2000 uh, dot-com bubble when dozens of internet companies rose to have huge market capitalizations without making the smallest of profit. As you might already know, the valuations did not hold and those um, companies saw their stock prices plunge and valuations shrink. The fact that prices moved that much shows that there are many other factors besides earning that can influence a stock. So, in conclusion, what makes a price change? Well, no one really knows for sure. Some think that it is impossible to predict how prices will change, while others use different strategies to figure the next move, which is what we'll be looking at in the next lecture. The most important concepts to grasp from this video are Number one, stock prices are fundamentally driven by supply and demand, which in a way you can look at as uh, public sentiments. 
Number two is that in theory, earnings are what affect the valuation of a company. But there are other ways investors use to predict stock prices. But something important to remember is that investor sentiments and expectations uh, are what ultimately affect a stock price. So this is the end of the lecture. Thanks for watching.